today. It has been a uh, trying week. We lost our own sister Benita's Thursday, early Thursday morning. Just very, very sad. Uh, in times like this, you know, uh, we often ask ourselves, you know, what, what do we do now? I'm reminded of uh, one of Paul's letters. He encouraged the young Timothy to uh, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Soldiers who are in battle, uh, they experience the loss of those who are in combat with them, and uh, they die, or the main, but the good soldier, they continue on, amen? amen. And, uh, they continue in the fight, they continue in the struggle, uh, whatever their mission is, whatever the goal is, they persevere. And so in the midst of loss, uh, we're sad, we're grieving. Um, honestly, man, I had a hard time just coming to church this morning. Um, we're sad, we're grieving, uh, but we have to press on uh, towards the call of God and the prize that is in Jesus Christ. Our Lord, I remember the day before my mother died. Uh, she looked at me and said, David, you got to keep moving. And so uh, that's what we do. We keep moving. Amen? Amen. Let us continue to pray for um, uh, Sister Kristen and Sister Caitlin. Amen. Um, it's, it's, it's hard being without both of your parents. So uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it is an experience that eventually all of us are going to face. Yes. But, um, and so let us pray and lift them up and let us help them as much as we possibly can. Yes. And so, um, and so, you know, we're losing people in this church who were in key areas of ministry. Yes. And so, what that means is some of us are going to have to step it up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Wasn't that good that time? Amen. So, uh, and your heart is as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And so good soldiers, sometimes they have to do things that they uh, was not their uh, original mission. As a, as a military historian, I know on D-Day, uh, sometimes the commanding officer went down. Somebody would always have to step it up. Take place and move on. So, you know, we're going to need you to fill in these gaps. As the Lord says, we, we occupy till He comes. Amen? Amen. He didn't say you get to a point and sit down. He said, occupy, work till I come. So, amen. amen. And amen. A lot of tragedy in the land. Um, two major shootings. Uh, one in Texas, one in, I believe, Dayton. <laughs> As I watch the news, they keep asking, how can someone do this? And the world is perplexed. We shouldn't be. Amen. Uh, this is the nature of man. If you read Romans 3, uh, the Holy Spirit through Paul, very plainly said they are swift to shed blood. blood. In the fear of God, they have not known. And so, this is man. And the remedy God has given is the gospel. And, and so we're going to watch uh, the legislators, and they'll be fighting and fussing and, as they normally do. But our primary mission is not to be deterred, but to continue to preach the gospel. The only thing that will change the heart of any individual and, and make them not do some of the terrible things that men If Jesus must be on the inside. Yep. Amen. The person of the Holy Spirit. 
And apart from that, um, any of us are, are there's a capability there possible to do anything. But I'm so glad that those of us who know Christ, we have a, a comforter, an advocate, and name of the Holy Spirit, he's on the inside. He walks beside us. And he's the one that whispers in your ear and says, don't you do that. Amen? Amen. And so we need to obey that still, small voice. And so, Despite of all of the tragedy, let us, let us not lose focus. Amen. Are we to grieve? Yes. yes. But Paul says, not as those who have no hope. Amen. Amen. And so we grieve, but it is not a hopeless grief. Um, Brother Vince and I were talking yesterday, and uh, as he, he was coming in, I was coming out, and we were both limping. Amen. <laughs> And he talked about his pain, and I shared my pain. Amen. <laughs> my back hurt, and he said he just ate. Amen. So as we limped in, and you know, we talked about Sister Bonita, and as we were leaving, he said, now, I wonder if Brother Chris was, was like this, you know, the welcomer. And I said, I don't know, but I guarantee you, whatever it is, it's better than what's down here. Amen. <laughs> and he went up the stairs and did that. Amen. <laughs> and so uh, we know where Sister Bonita, she's in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 whether you want to or not, we're going. Amen. We're going. We're going. We're going. And so, just need to be ready. Boast not thyself tomorrow, for thou knowest not what day may bring. Yes. And so, this is why we, 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 it's so important to, to know Jesus and embrace the gospel and look to him and trust in him and him alone. He is the beginning, the end, and everything in between. He's the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in him, trust in him, uh, he said, though you die, you'll, you'll never die. And uh, if you believe in him and you do die, he says, you shall live again. Yes. Jesus says, in this world you have tribulation, be of good cheer. Yes. I have overcome the world. We need to understand that the things that we go through in this world, is, it, it's a passing moment. Amen? Yes. And uh, won't compare to the joy and the eternity to come. So look ahead by faith. Amen? Amen. Yes. Trusting in the words of Jesus. And so... Uh, this is our hope, our strength, and uh, it's what we do. Amen? Amen. And amen. That's my sermon before, sir. Let us all stand. <laughs> Let us all stand. Psalm 44, 18, 3, 26. Let's read. Our heart has not turned back. Our steps have not deviated from your way. Then you have crushed us in the place of jackals and covered us in the shadow of death. We have forgotten the name of our God, or extend our hands to a strange God. But not God find us out, for he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake, we are healed all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Arouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget all our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is some bound to us. Our body pleads to the earth. Rise up, be our help, and redeem us for the sake of your loving kindness. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. Even on a day like this, we still thank you. Thank you. This is still the day that our Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it. And so, Lord, it's just a wonderful thing to know Jesus. It's a wonderful thing to know the Lord of Lord. It's just a wonderful thing to know the one who has the keys of, of life and death. Yes. And it's just so wonderful to know that because he lives, we live. Because he rose, we will rise. And so what a privilege and a blessing it is just to know Jesus. And so Lord, now we thank you today. We praise you. We lift up your holy name. Lord, lead us and guide us as we pray you today. Lead us and guide us in the word of God. Lord, strengthen those who, who need your strength more than they've ever needed it before. And as I said, we pray for Sister Kristen and Sister Caitlin, Lord, strengthen them, amen, amen. amen. and uphold them. We pray for others who are in grief, others, sickness, the Lord in spite of it all. We look to you and we trust in you. Father God, this is a communion Sunday, and the Lord prepare our hearts and minds as we confess and Confess our sins and and uh, be honest with the Lord and, and, and tell the Lord all about it. The Lord, make us fit. 
Yes. We'll receive the bread and the cup today, lay it upon our Father God, we praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Our first scripture reading this morning is found in Genesis chapter 29, verses 9 through 15. For context sake, I'm going to read through verse 20. So Genesis 29, 9 through 20 is our first scripture reading this morning. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. When Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted his voice and wept. Jacob told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. So when Laban heard the news of Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Then he related to Laban all these things. Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful of form and face. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. 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 Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than to give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed, and they seemed to him but a few days before his love for her. And the rest of the story will be next week. <laughs> Make a seat.
we continue with our reading of Scripture this morning. Our next two uh, segments of the reading. The first will be found in Psalms 105, verses 23 through 28. That's Psalm 105, verses 23 through 28. And the second will be found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 41 and 46. That's Matthew 22, 41 and 46. The book of Psalm reads, Israel also came into Egypt. Thus Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he caused his people to be very fruitful and made them stronger than their adversaries. He turned their heart to hate his people, to delay craftily with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his wondrous acts among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they did not rebel against his words. Our last portion of scripture comes in Matthew 22, verse 41 through 46. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, then how does David in the spirit called him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare Yeah. 
Matthew chapter 24, verse 11. And those of you who may not know it, uh, good to see Sister, Ka Sister Shekinah yeah. back there. Yeah.
as I have stated repeatedly, the passion of Jesus, it is the gospel. It is the good news. For the gospel is Jesus died for our sins on the cross. According to the scriptures, he was buried, and he bodily rose from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Everything that is attached to our sin was remedied through the gospel. It was remedied through the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, Calvary. Everything that is associated with that, it is significant for the people of God. And the reason we know that is because Jesus teaches us, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. But he, Jesus, answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word, every sentence, every paragraph, every chapter, every book, every person, all groups of persons that are recorded within the pages of the scriptures is important for the minds and hearts of the people of God. All of these, every word, every jot, every tittle has a story. Every dot, every tittle, every word, every person, every group, every paragraph has a message that we as a people of God need to hear and then contemplate or meditate upon in order to live as God has commanded us to live. We have examined and meditated upon the role of Judas Iscariot, the traitor, Shifty CD politician, Pontius Pilate, Herod the Tetrarch of Galilee, a drunk, Nicodemus and Joseph Arimathea, the two thieves crucified to Jesus, left and right, the crowd that surrounded the cross of our Lord, the Roman soldiers who crucified the Lord, taunted him, hurled abuse of him, and in a few hours confessed that he was the Son of God. <coughs> this morning we turn our attention to the women well. who played a role in Jesus' death on the cross, his burial, in his bodily resurrection from the dead. Now, once again, Luke 23, 49 says, in all his Christ acquaintances, and the women who accompanied him from Galilee, standing at a distance, saying, these things. What had they seen? Well, Jesus had just died on the cross. 23, 46 says, And Jesus cried out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The rest of that verse says, Having said this, he breathed his last. Jesus had died. In verse 47, the centurion he preached about last Sunday, he began to praise God by confessing the word, certainly this man was innocent, or certainly this was a righteous man. And then he, along with all of the other Roman soldiers as we examine the other Gospels, also confessed truly this man was the Son of God. The crowds that consisted of the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Jewish lay people who were there, they were overcome with terror as they witnessed the same things the Roman soldiers had observed. The darkness, the earthquakes, the rocks began to split. How Jesus breathed out his last words. They still didn't confess to that son of God who saw it, but they began to beat their breasts in fear of terror. And they left for their homes. Verse 49 then says that all his acquaintances, Jesus' acquaintances, and the women who accompanied him from Galilee were standing at a distance seeing these things. These acquaintances, they were not Jesus' original disciples. They were not the 11 <coughs> remaining disciples, save the youngest one, John. We know this because while Christ was on the cross, he addressed the youngest, John, 
He said, I want you to take care of my mother. We read that in, 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 in John's Gospel. Uh, but we know the rest of the disciples were hiding in deep undercover. <laughs> For according to the Gospel records, as soon as Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, they split the scene. Mark 14, 50 record this as, and they all left him, Jesus, and fled. This is extremely important to remember in connection with the women who came to finish the burial process early on Sunday morning and discovered the tomb empty. Remember that. The 11 who had spent so much time with Jesus, all of this personal time, all of this intimate time, saw all of these miracles, saw him raise Lazarus, saw him walk on the water, thousands of you fish and a few loaves of bread. When the Lord was arrested, they split the scene. Feet don't fail me now, every man for himself. And they ran and hid. Well, in 50 to 54, Joseph and Mary fed. John tells us also Nicodemus was with them. A member of the Jewish religious elite, they went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. They were given permission. And so Joseph takes Jesus' dead body down and prepares it for entombment. But remember, they could not finish the burial process because the Sabbath was near. John tells us that they had bought about 75 pounds of spices. And they would anoint the body and, and wrap it up in, 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 in mummy fashion. They would, they, would, they would smear these spices over the body and they were smeared on top of the linen wrappings as they wrapped it on. And in a short period of time, it would become hardened. And the theory was the, the, the spices, the aromas, and the fragrant spices, they would cover up the smell while the body decayed. And normally, a year later, they would come back and collect the bones, and they would put them in what they called an ossuary. But because the Sabbath was near, they could only anoint the body, and Jesus' neck and head was left undone. And so John tells that they simply placed a napkin over his head. Now, the women were, were, were looking on, as the Bible says, as, as, as Joseph and Nicodemus were preparing Jesus' body for burial. We see that in 55 and 56. The women who had been following Jesus from Galilee, they were looking on, and they saw the tomb where Jesus had been laid, and they saw how he had been laid. They saw how his body had been prepared. And so it's obvious these women saw the fact that the body had not had been properly prepared for burial, everything except the head. And so these women, they had to have had a conference because they all went home to their individual homes and they gathered all the spices and perfumes they had and they were determined to come back after the Sabbath and finish this process on the Lord. And so these women, they, they, they returned preparing Jesus' body for burial. In the meantime, the 11 grown men Wearing size 13, 14 shoe. <laughs> We're in hiding. Mm -hmm. And so these women rested on the Sabbath as the law of Moses commanded. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27 through 56, tells us the names of these women. They were Mary Magdalene. They were Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and another mother who was, the, who was the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Now, the sons of Zebedee were Jesus' original disciples, James and John, whom Jesus named Bonerges, translated means sons of thunder. This fact is recorded as followed in Mark 3, 17, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to them he, Jesus, gave them the name Bonerges, which means sons of thunder. It appears James and John were extremely dogmatic. Their mother was there. Their mother's name was Shalom. The other Mary there.
there was the mother of James and Joseph. She was the mother of another of Jesus' original disciples, James of Alphaeus, or James the Less. Of course, most know who Mary Magdalene was. She was a woman whom Jesus had delivered from seven demons. Luke 8, 1 through 2 records this as follows. Soon afterwards, he began going around from one city and village to another, proclaiming and preaching the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sickness, Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Luke 24, 10 also records there were some other women also who went home after Jesus had died on the cross to prepare spices and perfumes to fully anoint Jesus' body for entombment. These could have been the other women mentioned in Luke 8, 3. It reads like this. These are also followers of the Lord, women, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, and Susanna, and many others who were contributing their support out of their private means. So, here's the picture. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he and the disciples would go out and preach, and the women were supporting them with their private means contributing to their support. So, so the women were support as the men went out and did the dangerous work. Come on, teach. Amen. Right. Come on, teach. Nowadays, let me move on here. Uh, uh, that's almost reversed now, isn't it? Uh, uh, uh. Luke 24, 1 through 10. <clears throat> At early dawn on Sunday morning, the first day of the week, the women who had went home to prepare spices and perfumes to finish anointing Jesus' body came to Jesus' tomb. Verse 10 says these women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, mentioned in Luke 8, 3 that I just read, and Mary, the mother of James Alphaeus, one of Jesus' original disciples, and also some other women whose names are not mentioned here, but they are mentioned in the other Gospels. Mark 6, 3 and 3 says that they went to Jesus' tomb, they had a concern as to who was going to roll which they had already seen Joseph and Nicodemus roll in front of the entrance of Jesus' tomb. The text says they were saying to one another, it is in the Greek in perfect sense, meaning they were saying this to one another over and over. So this was quite a discussion as the women were going to the tomb. Who is going to roll the stone away for us from the entrance of the tomb? However, when they arrived at the tomb, they found the stone already rolled away. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, 2 through 4, records why the stone had already been moved. It reads as follows, And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guard took for fear of him became like dead men. So these women, they, they entered the tomb of the body of Jesus was not there. It was gone, and they were perplexed about this. As we read John's Gospel, we understand why they were perplexed. The body was gone, but the grave clothes were still there in one piece. So the grave clothes had not been unwrapped or anything like this. Uh, 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 that whole encasing was in one piece. With all the spices, the body was not there. And the Bible says the napkin that Joseph and Nicodemus had, that Joseph and Nicodemus had placed on Jesus' head, the Bible says it was neatly folded up in a, another place. And I've often said that the poor Jesus must have been a neat man because after he wrote from there, he folded up that napkin and just placed it in another place. We would have just flung it. <laughs> so they are perplexed. His body's gone, but the grave clothes are still here. As they were looking at this scene in perplexion, two men wearing dazzling clothing suddenly appeared beside them. In other words, as they were looking at the scene of the empty grave clothes that had been wrapped around Peter's body, out of nowhere, two men appeared out of 
thin air. They were angels who had materialized into some kind of physical form. And the women were terrified, and I understand why. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh. And these women stood in terror. These angels said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? They further said, He is not here, but he is risen. Yes, sir. Remember how he spoke to you while he was in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And the text said it was at this point these women remembered the words of the Lord. It was at this moment these women believed Jesus had bodily been raised from the dead just as he, Jesus, had previously taught him. So the women, they immediately believed. We remember when he said this. And they immediately believed that the Lord had risen from the dead. And so these women, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, Salome was also there, Kuzo was also there, or the wife of Kuzo was also there. They went back and they began telling these things to the eleven. But to the apostle, the words of these women seemed like nonsense, for it reads as follows in Luke 24 and 11, but these words appeared to them as nonsense. And they would not believe them. The word nonsense translated idle tales in the King James Bible is the Greek word letros. It, it means foolish words to the eleven. The testimony of these women was foolishness. Mark gives us additional information about the behavior of Jesus' original disciples after the women had reported to them that Jesus had risen from the dead. Mark 16, 9 through 13 reads as follows. Now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive, that had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. After that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on their way to the country. They went away and reported to the others, but they did not believe them either. Verse 14 in the same chapter, Mark then reads, Afterwards, this is afterwards, he Jesus appeared to the eleven themselves. As they were reclining at the table. And it says he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they had not believed those who had been seen, who had seen him after he had risen. These, of course, were the women. Now, it, when it says he reproached them, I know we think Jesus just sort of shook his finger at them. You bad boys. No, the King James says he upbraided them. The Greek word was, we would say, he really got in their grip. It almost appears, he, it, it almost looked like some of them jacked him up. <laughs> Amen. Like grabbed him, didn't he? I told you this is going to happen. <laughs> Sort of like the Jesus who had cleansed the temple. Yeah. Amen. He upbraided them for their unbelief. They refused to believe the women folk. Now, I haven't given you the full story in relationship to these godly women coming to the tomb. Let, therefore, let me just give you the whole order. Come on. It's going to take a lot of time. It took me, I, I don't know, all day Thursday, I think, and you can put all of these together. And, and, and you can pretty well get the order here. Come on, teach. So let me give you the order of all the appearance of Jesus from a harmony of the four Gospels after his resurrection in order that we get a better grasp of how integral these women were in Jesus' physical resurrection from the dead. Three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, start for the tomb of Jesus. And they are followed by the other women, Mary Spices. The three find the stone rolled away. Mary Magdalene immediately leaves and goes to tell the disciples that stone has been rolled away, the body is not there. We read that in Luke 23, 55 through 24, 9, 
and also John 21 through 2. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, draws near the tomb, and they see the angel of the Lord, Matthew 28, 2. She goes back to meet the other women who are following with spice to tell them. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter and John, because of Mary Magdalene's testimony concerning the empty tomb, they go to the tomb and find it just as Mary Magdalene had stated. We read that in John 23 10. Mary Magdalene returned to the tomb weeping, wondering whether someone had stolen the body of the Lord. She sees one of the angels and then she sees Jesus. Remember the story? And, and, and she was crying, somebody stole him, and I don't know where he is. And she was just in grief, and finally Jesus said, Mary, remember that? And she knew it was him, and she clung, and he said, stop clinging to me. I haven't gone back yet. Stop clinging to me. I haven't gone back yet. Mm -hmm. She then leaves and goes and tells the title she has seen and talked with the Lord. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, meanwhile, has met the women who were following them with the spices. If they are returning, they meet the two angels, Luke 24, 4 through 5, Mark 16, 5. They also receive the message from the angel that Jesus has risen. And going back to report to the disciples, then they are personally met by Jesus himself. Matthew 28, 8 through 10. Remember, they, they fell down at his feet and began to worship him. But in spite of all of these, but in spite of all of the testimony of the women, Jesus' original disciples did not believe. <laughs> but consider their words nonsense. Idle tales. Foolishness. What did we learn from these godly women who were the first to see the body resurrected from the dead Messiah, the Savior, Lord of all Jesus, the Son of God? There are quite a few. I think I'm going to go four or five. Sure. Come on, teach. Yes. I think the first thing I'll say is this. The disciples refused to believe the women. And the women were simply telling them what Jesus had already told them. So they were simply telling them what God has said. Amen. And the men refused to believe them. They were telling them what Jesus, the God-man, had said. And the men refused to believe him. And so when Jesus comes, appears to them, he upbraids them. He jacks them up for not believing the testimony of those who told them they are risen from the dead. This is not so much for the women, but for the men. Amen. Talk to me. When one of the sisters confronts you with the word of God, and they're right, you are obliged to obey. Amen. I got one loud amen from <laughs> Minister Elder Cole. Amen. <laughs> When it comes to what the scriptures say, it's not about gender. Amen. Amen. It is about what God has said. Has said. Yes, now I'm not talking about women preachers. I'm talking about what God has said. Uh -huh. Brethren, when the women are confronting us with the plain text and meaning of scripture, we can't dismiss them Amen. because they are women. That's right. We're obliged to obey the word of God. Amen. 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 I told y'all the women going to say go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the faithfulness of these women to the Lord. All these women have been followers of Jesus during his approximately three and a half year ministry. We read this to you in Luke 8, 1 through 3. Let me read it again soon afterwards. 
began going around from one city to another, proclaiming and preaching the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses. Mary was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod, Stuart, and Susanna, and many others who were contributing to their support out of their private means. This was very early during Jesus' earthly ministry. Verse 1 is very clear the 12 were with Jesus, but also certain women. When it came to Jesus' passion, his suffering, beginning right after he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, the beatings and the scourge that he endured, his crucifixion unto death, the eleven deserted him. We read it throughout Mark 15, 4, 5, uh, 14, 50, and they all left him and ran. Peter tried to follow Jesus after he had been arrested, but ended up denying the Lord in a cursing rage. Mm -hmm. Mark 14, 66 through 71, as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the serpent girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus the Nazareth, but he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. And he went out to the porch, the servant girl saw him, and began once more to say to the bystander, this is one of them. But again he denied it, and after a little while the bystanders were again saying to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean too. But he, Peter, began to curse and spare. <laughs> Do not know this man you're talking about. The youngest of the disciples, John, he was present at the crucifixion for a period of time. John 19, 25 to 27, it was here that Jesus committed the immediate care of his mother to John. It says this, for standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Jesus' aunt, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, that's John the beloved, standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. But even after John and the rest of the disciples, but even after this, John, he, he meets up with the rest of the disciples, and then they all go back and hide. We know this because after Jesus rises from dead and he finally appears to them, when he shows up, they're hiding. John 19, 20, so when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. In stark contrast to the men someplace high, well, so we pray. Scarred. 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 The women are of early sun morning. The same women who had contributed their support out of their private means, they're not in hiding. They're of early Sunday morning, four days. They're going to finish this process on the body of the Lord. Even though it looked helpless from a human standpoint, these women were still faithful and loyal to Jesus unto death. While the 11 remaining disciples were, who had spent so much intimate time with Jesus, were high and scared to death of the Jews, these women were up at dawn, doing what they could for Jesus, even though he had died. In general, this is true today. That is, Women always seem to more loyal, be more loyal in favor to Jesus and the work that needs to be done in the church than the men. Amen. To our Let me read that again. The same is true today. Women always seem to be more loyal and faithful to Jesus and the work which is to be done in the church than the men. This does not mean there are no women who are sorry churchmen because there are some of them. <laughs> But in general, or from an overall perspective, women always seem to be the most loyal to the Lord. And they seem to always be the ones who are the most consistent in working in the kingdom of God. Amen. I guarantee it. I, what I, I guarantee you is the fact that on any given Sunday or other church day, look around the women outnumber the men. Mm. Right. 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 
room by far. This is an indictment of how sorry way too many, many men are when it comes to the work of the ministry for Jesus. But it is a praise overall for the godly women who often stand in the gap and do what needs to be done in the local church. <coughs> the men are at home. Watch your NFL Sunday. <laughs> Tell the truth. Based on this fact, I really believe, listen to what I'm going to say. I, based on this, I really believe most of the rewards for faithful ministry will be received by women at the judgment seat of Christ on the day every believer gives an account of his or her work in the kingdom to determine eternal rewards and eternal loss to be experienced throughout eternity. Based upon this thing that men, we tend to come to Jesus, I don't know what's wrong with us, but the women are there. I'm not going to start a new denomination on this, but I believe it's true. It just makes sense. If the women are more faithful than the men, then it's reasonable to believe they will be given the most of the rewards on the day we all give an account. Amen. Come on. In contrast, I truly believe the Greek that will suffer the most loss, I'm talking about overall will be, but still say our men. I make this observation based on the numbers of women in comparison to men on any given Sunday at any church. And the numbers of women doing the work of the ministry in comparison to men, they always outnumber the men by a large percentage. Yeah. Seem like we still hide <laughs> back there with the disciples. Still in that room, amen. The faith of these women in the word of the Lord. Once again, we can better understand this by comparing the behavior of the women after Jesus rose from the dead with the behavior of the men. In Luke 24, 3 through 8, the women, after being told by the two angels that Jesus said he would rise from the dead, it says, they immediately remembered his word and they believed. It says, but when they entered and did not find the body of the Lord while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing, and as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hand of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. Verse 8 says of the women, and they remember his words. Yes. They believe immediately. In contrast, after the disciples heard Jesus had risen from the dead, they didn't believe his words. Let me read it to you, Mark, uh, Luke 24, 8 through 11. And they, the women, remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James. Also the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But these words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe. These men who were led to become the apostles, they had been told the same thing by the Lord. Matthew 16, 21, Jesus said, From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. They had heard the same thing. However, when they heard that the Lord had risen from the dead, they refused to believe. The women believed the word of the Lord immediately. I truly believe these godly women are indicative of all godly women. They believe the word of God. It seems men are more stubborn when it comes to believing the word of God without question. And the plain meaning of the text is evident, as is the case before us this morning. Of course, I'm speaking in general terms. Mm -hmm. There's some stubborn women out there. I guarantee you this, though. Check me out. You very seldom get in a crazy conversation with a woman about the Word of God. 
normally we run faster, you know, we're, we're physically stronger, built differently, legs are built differently, rear end built differently, shoulders built differently. God built men to be fearless. Amen. He built you for combat. Amen. To protect the weaker vessel. Yes. vessel Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. So we need to be fearless. Yes. Not I ain't getting out there. <laughs> I'm scared too. I want to live too. <laughs> I'm telling y'all right now, you roll up at 320 Eastwood, cutting up. It's on. Amen. You ain't got to worry. You got to add. It's, it's on. Amen. Because up in here, I'm king. Amen. And I will die trying. Hopefully you will before I do. Amen. <laughs> God did not call us men to be fearful and scared and in hiding, especially when it comes to standing up for this God man named Jesus. He gave himself on Titan's cross in order that you could be saved and spend your eternity with him. We have a responsibility and God created us men to be fearless for Jesus. And fearless in everything else that we do. Scared. Scared. Somebody say boo. You jump this high. Jump, you, you, you know. Jump that high. Boo. Scared. Something needs to be done. You back in the background learning. <laughs> Anybody gonna check it out? Yeah. <laughs> we had a break in at this church about oh, seven years back when they were having the uh, Wednesday night Awana. So this door was open. When I got here, you know, the I didn't expect the sisters to go in there. And they hadn't been in. Whose responsibility was it? Amen. Should I have said, Sister Ramona, you're over this ministry. <laughs> Jesus. 
Am I in the upper yeah. house today? Yes. And they seem not to have a problem with it. I read a lot of church history and all that stuff. I never read, not till recently, I, 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 and I've been way back in there. For the last year, I've immersed myself in the ancient history of the church. And I haven't found one woman back there to say, you know what, I can preach just as well as a guy. Mm -hmm. Come on, teach. Yeah. I didn't see, I haven't found a woman trying to have a guy. Squaw. Then <laughs> 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 I had my own one that said we should be able to do this. We're just as good as you. I had my one. We spoke in Galatians, male, there's neither male nor female, junior, and I ain't got nothing to do with that, but. It seems these women were content with the roles Jesus put them in. And it was a great role. They were the first ones to see the Lord risen from the dead. He entrusted them with, go tell my disciples. That was a, that, that, that was a great thing. Amen. And, and they seemed to be content with it. Why? Because they were godly women. Now, what is a woman that doesn't want to be content with that? She is a rebellious woman. You're not less than. God has roles in the kingdom of God. And when you refuse to follow God's natural order of things, you're not godly. You are in rebellion against your God. Amen. Today, it's all over the place. There's certain things only women can do. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's certain things only men can do. Mm -hmm. Man, you ain't got no business up in Sister Juju's house at 12 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Just you talking about having a Bible study. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a woman's job. Mm -hmm. Sister so and so, you ain't got no business up in Brother Bobo's house. Mm -hmm. Late at night talking about making a pastoral call. <laughs> it's not good. God has an order, you know, it says, I'm, I'm going to shut it down because I realize I'm a dinosaur. But we're going to give an account of all of this. And we stand before God. And God is not going to be bending corners and compromising. It is what it is. And we're going to give an account exactly how it's written in the word of God. I understand at the age of 60, my best days are behind me. I ain't ready to pack it up and go yet, but I know I'm not moving as fast. That lets me know, hey, your better days are behind you, Junior. Why would I start compromising now? When the day when I will give an account to God, what I preach in this pulpit, the day is, every day is closer and closer and closer. And even though there are some hard Thank you for those women who so 
boldly went to the tomb of Jesus early on that Sunday morning. They teach us so many lessons. How we are to think. How we are to live. Both men and women in the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray that you will impress upon each of our minds exactly what you needed each individual to hear from this word of God. It may be different for different people, but Lord, we pray. And we know that your word never comes back void. But it always accomplishes the purpose for you which you send to accomplish. And so, Lord, we pray and know that this word will accomplish what you sent it to do today. We pray that everybody in the building today knows Jesus as Savior. All of us have an appointment. Nobody's in this world for good. Whether you're saved or not saved, this is not your last stop. Your last stop is either with Jesus in eternity or in outer darkness, weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. And what separates the eternity of one of hope and the other is the relationship with Jesus. Out of all that you do, make sure you have embraced Jesus Christ. To embrace the gospel under salvation, repentance of sin, and faith. Jesus died for your sins on the cross. According to the scriptures, he was buried. And he rose again on the third day. That is the gospel. Receive it. Cling to it. Embrace it. There is salvation in none other and in no other but this gospel and this Jesus. If there is one today and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, the altar word of the here to pray, give you if there is one today. Perhaps there is one who believe God is so called you to be a member of this church, the altar workers are here to just help you. If there is one today, you just raise your hand. Father God, just bow. Father God, we praise and thank you for each and every thing. Lord, we thank you for the word of the Lord. Lord, we pray for those who have not received the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that they will be convicted of their sin and they will give their hearts and their lives to you. Lord, there are just so many things we pray about today. Lord, I really pray for Sister Kristen and Sister Kate. We want you to know that we agree with you. Amen. Your mom is just such a part of our family. I don't know. I, I, I feel it. Amen. Man, Sister Kendall came to this church either Friday or Saturday. And I just said, man, I, 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 sense, I sense it. And so, we want you to know that we agree, we really agree with you. That yes. Yes. We love the mom and the dad to death. Yes. And they were part of our family, and you are part of our family, and we're yes. always here for you. Amen? Yes. And we support you at this hour and everything that we have and all that we are. And um, we didn't want your mom to die. But God knows best. But we didn't want to see her linger like she did in the last days. And I know you didn't either. And so we trust that God knows best. <coughs> Lord, help us all to realize we have not said goodbye to Sister Bermuda, but simply we'll see you a little later on. Amen. Amen. And so that's that's we look forward to that day. We do grieve, but not as those who have no hope. Your mother was a warrior. She was a soldier. We could count on her. And she gave it all. 
Even during her sickness, she gave it her all. Amen. She still directed choir and, 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 and did song service and did altar work, and she still, and she told me, I, and she told me, I, I talked to Sister Monique when she was first diagnosed. She said, she said, right now I'm, I'm concerned about the testimony that I leave. <laughs> and so she persevered, amen, yes. to the end. I talked to her Tuesday. She said, you know, I watched the sermon online. She said, it just wasn't the same. I, I, I'd rather would have been there. Yes. <laughs> yes. We've lost a soul. Yes. For now. But we shall see you again. And so we pray for you today, knowing that God will assuage your grief and give you exactly what you need at this moment in your lives. We pray for those who are sick, those who are afflicted, those going through just different things. And we pray for wayward church members. Yeah. Look, we just don't need you back. You need to be back because your eternal reward and losses are at stake. Amen. And God is going to reward the faith. And so we pray for you today. Just wait for it. And so, Lord, we pray these things today. Father God, I pray for all those families and so much grief over the mass killings in Davis in Texas. It reminds us we live in an evil, sinful world. And we don't boast ourselves of tomorrow. We don't know what they may bring. That's why we need to always be ready. We never know when eternity is going to find us. Father God, I praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, let God speak. Say amen. amen. amen.